Um, and yeah, I want to use the next um, 20 minutes or so to tell you a bit about what we've been up to at Parity Tech um, for roughly a year um, and how that might be interesting to you guys or solve some of your problems. Um, a bit to set the stage. So what I'm exactly uh, specifically talking about is a system we call uh, Bridge, Parity Bridge system. Um, that basically connects two smart contract enabled chains and relays messages in right now in a federated way and in the future maybe in a more trustless way. Um, so we initiated this kind of um, project a year ago mainly um, in, in light of our Polkadot project because in the Polkadot ecosystem what it will eventually allow is connecting um, a blockchain that has its own mean of coming to consensus, so its own consensus engine, like Ethereum now or like Bitcoin, do um, trustlessly talk to another um, a blockchain, such as a parachain within Polkadot. But, um, and that was, I think, around March last year when Merrick started working on that, really pushing at that. And since summer, it has been in roughly state where it's usable. And um, in talks with um, Giveth, for example, or today um, a Colony in Aragon, we figured that it might be actually already useful today for certain of the problems that have come up. Specifically that um, we've seen projects that have been working for over two years on their dApps and the contracts are in place and everything could potentially work, but two problems are prohibited or prohibiting them to uh, deploy and um, users to use this, um, these steps. Namely, number one, network clogging on the main app, right? Scalability, transaction don't go through, right? I'm looking at you, crypto kitties. Um, this is number one. And the other one is obviously high gas price, right? So um, if I hear from Colony, it would cost them $3 to create a task. That's not very viable, right? To launch that right now. Uh, same with givers, right? That want to do something really great and give to people and if like a huge cut of every donation goes towards like um, gas cost, not really cool. They can't launch it. So, um, Parity Bridge, what is that? Parity Bridge is basically um, um, kind of software that was implemented in Rust and can communicate with contracts. So it connects to two nodes um, and each of these nodes are watching one chain. Right now, EVM-based chains. So let's take, for example, the Ethereum mainnet and the Coven test network. And in the future, what this kind of bridge system will allow is to relay arbitrary messages from one chain to the other. So like on the mainnet, an app could say like, hey, guys, you know, on this other test network, do this app should do that and transfer tokens to this other chain. So where we are right now, this is where we want to be in like roughly one to two months with an audit maybe a bit longer. It depends if you guys pitch in and help us out of it there, but um, that's pretty much the timeline. But what it can do right now is it allows you to, it allows the user to deposit Ether, so the native token on one chain, into a contract and the bridge system relays these Ether they wrap them to an ERC20 token on the other chain. So for example, on Coven. So that the user can then use kind of this, uh, I, I don't know what you would call it, pack token on the other chain and do with it whatever you want, but without these um, tight scalability limitations that you currently have on the mainnet, as well as the gas cost, because transactions currently on Coven, for example, are for free. Um, so, um, what does it mean? Like, let's be a bit more specific in terms of security and trust. As you all know, the public Ethereum network uses proof of work, right? It's what we, that's state of the art right now. We want to go to proof of stake at some point, but that may take, may take a while, Casper may take a while, and so forth. Um, at Parity, right, we, we implemented these kind of uh, pluggable consensus engine and you can have, can, you can run your EVM based chain also with something we call proof of authority or potentially proof of stake, DPoS, whatever you want. And um, that is what Coven currently is, right? You have a managed upkeep, there are some community projects, um, namely Etherscan, um, 
um, as Grid Singularity and like eight others currently, um, that are maintaining the integrity of the chain. But what you get therefore is currently, yeah. right, um, I think 10 or 100x in transaction throughput and no gas price. So how could a DAP use that right now, a team that is in, right now in, in a position where like the contract work, they want to test it with real users and like find out in um, how they have to change their DAP in order to, you know, roll out a mainnet launch once the Ethereum mainnet is done. So we think it might be a sensible idea to, for these projects to either run their own POA chain with whatever authorities should, should run this chain or like are important to, um, for the system to be trustworthy, or they use a network like Coven, where um, identified community members that we all know have, um, that like our ideologically aligned, they all have the same wishes and they will maintain the integrity of the chain um, and use Coven, for example. Or you do something in between where you say like, hey, you know, Coven and Ringby, they are a bit too much test net for me. And even if I would launch my, my application there, right? And if I had my users interact with them, there would be real value. I'm not very, I'm not confident enough about these test nets because like maybe Ringby or Coven says like, hey, you know, we test Casper now, right? What do you do with that? What you could do is like you come together, for example, Givis comes together with Rep3, whatever parity or Aragon or Colony and says like, hey, we, for example, spin up a new POA chain, right? We all have the same problem. We all know this is not the uh, long-term vision we want to get to. This is we want to move over to the Ethereum mainnet at some point again. But like for the time being, it would be fine if we maintain the integrity of this other chain and we can actually test our assumption, test user behavior and so forth and use the bridge for that. And I don't want to get into technicalities too much right now, um, but rather uh, move that over to more of a Q&I type of thing. Um, I will give a more technical and more in-depth talk and in, on Friday at uh, ECC at each CC and um, yeah, therefore, um, please ask questions straight away. What comes to your mind? Any questions for Parity Bridge? You mean um, developer tools around uh, the mainnet or public testnet that currently exist would have to be available for these other network? Is that what you mean? Like Infura, so Infura provides nodes on this other network? Yeah. Right. It's more around infrastructure. I, I understand. So namely, I think there are mm, several critical parts, right? We see a block explorer, like Etherscan, for example. We see MetaMask, right? And we see... Um, Number three is uh, Inflero, right? All of them support currently Ringby and Coven. One thing we could be, we could say like one of these networks should be less of a test network and more of like a something in between, right? Something that can facilitate um, these projects to do the sort of thing. These networks are already on Coven, uh, on, on um, Inflero, on MetaMask, on Etherscan. So I'm fairly confident if we as a community come together and say like, hey, we need that, in order to improve whatever we've built, um, they will be on board. I don't see a reason why Infura wouldn't support that, or MetaMask wouldn't support that, or um, for example, um, here, what was the third? Etherscan wouldn't support that. Um, but yeah, absolutely very crucial. On the other side, uh, we have projects like POA Network that work on like the very critical part of a block explorer to open source that, so that can just be deployed by whoever is interested. Uh, 
uh, you mean transaction throughput, like how much gas can be handled and so forth. Well, so the interesting part, um, we are in the process of kind of also like Slocket has been involved in that, um, in testing the limits. Um, and there are a lot of improvements, ongoing improvements, right? But I think at least 10x, 100x should be possible. So um, even on the throughput side, like it, it helps mitigate the problem, at least for some time, right? Um, Probably, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, right? It, it's not going to be the, the solution we are all looking for for like in, in one year or two, but it's probably the best we can do right now in, in a non centralized way. And I'm being careful here, right? Because like POA networks always like trigger this, ah, oh, doesn't feel right, right? But on the other side, hey, if we have 20 authorities, right, running the POA network and the bridge, and these are the same parties, and they are the very projects that run the dApps and that the users trust in any ways because they use the dApps. I think that is fair to say that it might be um, a sensible mitigation strategy for the time being. And I would argue that every project that would want to use that should make a pledge somehow or like say like, hey, we believe, we believe in the public network and that's where we want to be eventually. But I mean, that's happening right now. If I talk to some of the projects here, they say like, hey, we put it on RingPi now, right? And there are two parties that run RingPi, right? So, I mean, if you have no other option, what do you do? Well, you can go higher with the gas limit. That's a that's a point, right? And the, that's also a very interesting point. For example, now I think for Aragon, right? Um, that they say like, hey, they actually had trouble like, deploying um, their uh, contracts because uh, ga the gas limit was just too low. Um, something we could tackle in that sense too. Obviously, it wouldn't be everything wouldn't be mainnet compatible in the sense of if the gas uh, floor target, right, is on five million on the mainnet, and we do something, contract that we deploy that needs eight million on this other network, right, you can't just port it. But in order to the mainnet to become more scalable, it needs to increase that anyways. Yeah, please. So the, the, the question was basically what my personal estimate is in compromising the main proof of work chain compared to a proof of authority chain. So if I would have to estimate, right, I would have to compare it with one specific POA chain because like what really matters is what are the parties? How, like what other kind of uh, security mechanism do I bring in? As you suggested, for example, what you could do is we could have um, the POA authorities stake some kind of real uh, mainnet ether on the mainnet chain and have some kind of slashing, right? Because it's all in parity, it's all contract based, you can implement that actually. So this is incredibly difficult to answer and currently, right, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know, but um, I think especially in this phase of where we are right now in Ethereum, it would be fair to say to 